Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Bala here and today we're outside in my backyard doing this review because the weather is just so nice. Um, if you didn't see already from the title, uh, this is going to be one of the rarest knives that I have ever owned and probably will ever own because it's just so hard to come by. But um, This might give you a little hint of uh, what we're talking about today. Yeah. You don't really see that accent mark very often. So yeah, so uh, today we have a Pena X-Series knife. Um, and I, I actually got this knife used um, from Discord, actually, through a really nice knife community on Discord. And I'll put a link to that below. Strongly recommend checking that out, whether you're new to knives or you've been in it for a long time. Just a great group of guys to talk to and learn more about knives. And an excellent place to find knives that are typically hard to come by anywhere else. Um, the person who actually gave me this knife is Guild Rider, and I'd like to personally thank him uh, for, first of all, being patient with me because I'm, truth be told, pretty new to the world of used uh, knives. So there's not much that I knew coming into it. So he kind of showed me the right questions to ask and what to look out for and really guided me through that whole process when really anyone could have easily taken advantage of, uh, of me and I probably would have bought something that I didn't shouldn't have, you know, like a fake or whatever unsuspectingly so i'm very thankful to that whole community and especially guild definitely check out his reddit page i'll put a link for that in uh, the description below and also a link for that discord feel free to talk to him as well i know he's got several other knives for sale and he prices them uh very nicely his whole philosophy about um selling his knives is very admirable and i'll probably make an entire video just about that but um this knife really solidified my trust and appreciation for that entire community. So thank you, Guild, and definitely give him a check out. So without further ado, let's open up this thing. This is a Pena X-Series, but not just any Pena X-Series. Let's find out what model it is. And, and let me be frank, I've already unboxed this thing. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't stop myself, but let's just keep the experience real for you all. And look at that. So what I've got in my hands right here is a Pena X-Series uh, Front Flipper Trapper uh, in the Urban EDC Supply exclusive design, the Segaiha pattern, which is shown here on the uh, handle material. So the Segaiha pattern is like a traditionally Japanese style of uh, patterning for waves, uh, first originated in the 6th century. So a cool bit of history there as well. So typically you'd find this knife, um, you would probably find this knife well first of all you're not going to find it from a retailer uh, these days it's out of stock pretty much everywhere that sold them uh, they sold out within minutes for roughly 280 290 dollars um, but now you can find them uh, either used or on eBay or through like knife communities but they're still very hard to come by specifically this design is even more harder to come by um, I got this knife from uh, Guild at a really great price and Again, um, I'll get into that in a whole other video about, you know, uh, that whole knife community and everything great about it. But um, let's just take a second to appreciate this knife and how beautiful it looks. And I'll get into the specifications and the features and pros and cons of it shortly. So real quick, this knife in particular is slightly interesting, more interesting than your typical Pena X-Series Trapper. So the Urban EDC supplies, this design is engraved by Workerman, um, by a, I believe his name is Adam Brackney. I'll put a link into that uh, website as well about how uh, those, uh, his designs really carry on in the Urban EDC supply um, exclusive runs. But so he's pretty much, in, he's uh, the artist behind the engraving on the handle. And of course, Enrique Pena is the designer behind the knife. So with that out of the way, let's first focus on the handles here. So. One really cool aspect of the Sagaiha pattern, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. If I, let me know in the comments below how to say it properly. I've tried to look everywhere on proper pronunciation. I'm doing my best here. The Sagaiha pattern um, is really conducive to really good light flow patterns. If you're in like a, you know, a high light scenario or you're like right under the sun or whatever, if you're outside holding this knife and you move it just the right way, and I'm not sure if the camera will do this justice, but the light patterns go through the engraving and the titanium and they look incredible. You can see how the light bounces around in different directions, and it just looks really good as they follow the circles of the Segaiha pattern. And I think that's really cool, especially really great attention to detail. And as like an added secondary benefit, the Segaiha pattern 
offers really good grip on the handle without kind of digging in and being sharp on your hands. It kind of feels like you're running your finger across like the tail's end of a quarter or something like that. It just feels really nice and polished and smooth. Uh, one kind of thing I wish was done with a little bit more uh, detail, I guess, is the polishing inside these wave patterns could have been done in such a way that the light could reflect even more. But at that point, we're really nitpicking, and it does just it does a perfectly fine job of reflecting light properly. Of course, the, the handles are titanium through and through. Um, the engraving pattern carries on to both sides. Let's focus on the clip for a second here, shall we? So the clip here is certainly not deep carry by any means. Um, if you're going to deep carry it, you're going to be showing about this much of the knife out. I think this is okay. I typically prefer deep carry pocket clips, but with this one in particular, I don't mind so much because first of all, it's a, such a smaller, it's not a very small, but it's a smaller knife. And on top of that, the titanium, the coloring and the poly, or the, the finishing of the titanium and the screws are not extremely shiny or flashy or blingy. So they're not really going to catch too much attention if that's sticking out of your pocket. So I think that's great. Another thing is, of course, the clip is milled titanium, but right towards the edge here, this looks like what's what would be probably a sharper spot right here at the tip of the arrow. But surprisingly, you don't notice that when you're actually handling the knife. And I'll, I'll get into the ergonomics of and you know putting the knife in your palm and everything like that. But I just think the clip was executed really well. Uh, one final thing is you can't really find any sharp corner or anything like that on the, the handle. It's everything is just knocked down and done perfectly to just promote ultimate smoothness, really. I mean, if you look towards the end of the knife, there's no sharp corners, it's top, no sharp corners. Even in the back of the knife, when you try and stick your finger inside, you'd think that the finishing, you know, would be a little bit sharp, but even that's been knocked down and chamfered to perfection. And of course, I mean, everything is in line and adjusted beautifully and it just feels smooth. Everything about it just feels smooth. It's kind of like, it's, it feels like holding a coin, really. It just feels like perfectly smoothened out. So I think that's a really cool thing uh, with the handle in particular and just execute it perfectly. And of course the clip uh, also complements that. Now, if we get into the actual blade here, so we're dealing with um, a beautiful uh, trapper style M390, Bowler M390 uh, steel material. And if you guys can see here, it says Pena X-Series. We got a nail nick right there. Get that into focus. There we go. And of course, we also have M390 right there. I really do think that the, the blade uh, shape is beautiful. And if you guys look closely up at the top of the blade, notice how that swedge, right? The swedge on that top really matches the bottom side of that blade. I think that looks beautiful. Really good attention to detail and it looks awesome. And just look how towards the tip of the knife, it just blends in with the blade. I think that finish looks sick. It looks awesome. And if you, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but it's almost a near mirror polish edge on the, um, well, the cutting edge of the knife. It's not perfectly mirror polished or probably not even actually mirror polished, but just really well sharpened. And I know Guild didn't really put this through a whole lot of use, so we're pretty much looking at the factory edge on this thing, and it is really sharp. Oof. Hair shaving sharp. Of course, we'll cut through newspaper or coupons or whatever you want to cut with the $300 knife. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the blade, like the, the tip is extremely sharp. It's good for piercing and cutting through slightly thicker materials. Definitely that added belly adds a lot of good functionality for those kind of cutting tasks. Um, I just think it was done really well in terms of the overall finish. It, it does look really, really nice. And if we're looking at the overall blade, right, like as an entire, you know, as an entire knife, notice how the handle matches so well with the actual blade, right? Like Enrique Pena is known for those traditional and mo traditional knives with modern functionality, but with this knife in particular, you can just see how beautifully the blade matches with the handle. Take any other knife, say the, uh, the Pena Zulu or the Apache or Swayback even. Notice how those handles are also slightly different to match the blade styles that come with those knives. And I think that's a really cool thing how instead of just switching out any other blade, you know, if we had used any other kind of blade on this handle, it would probably still look good, but certainly would not look as good as it does right now. And I think Enrique Pena does a beautiful job of combining a really nice blade with really cool handles that match really well. So that's another thing. In terms of M390 as a steel, for my EDC purposes, I don't necessarily need a steel that strong. In fact, I'd prefer VG10 or, or sorry, S30V or, you know, one of those steels just for, you know, 
how easy it is to sharpen, but I don't mind M390. It's just that, you know, you have to be a little bit more careful with chipping and things like that because you don't want to have to sharpen M390 and have to reprofile an edge on M390. So just some light stropping and good attention will, will take you far on M390 steel. Get you guys some better angles of that. In terms of the jimping, I think it was done really well. They could have opted for a slightly more, I guess, a good word would be like chunky jimping that you guys can see here on the smock. Um, but they instead went with a really nice, um, finer jimping that looks traditional and still is very functional. Now, Riot Knives does an amazing job on finishing. I mean, everything is perfect on this knife. Zero blade play, solid lockup. Like, it, the thing feels like a fixed blade. Um, really good lockup. Of course, here we can see the frame lock, right? And we can see the steel insert right here, making contact with the blade. Check that out. There we go. And you would think that the nail nick kind of, to some people, it kind of stands out in a bad way, but I do think that it kind of blends in between those two different grinds, you know, the, the swedge and the grind on the belly of the knife. It does just kind of sit there perfectly. So in my opinion, I think it's been really tastefully placed. And for a nail nick, I mean, typically on, you know, of course on slip joints, you're gonna need them, but I like how they added that option here as well. Now, in terms of action and deployment, this knife, like I said earlier, has that modern functionality and that traditional look. So this is a front flipper and you'll have to, you'll have to forgive me here. I mean, I'm not a very good front flipper and this is my first really like good front flipper knife, but we got the thumb front flipping method right there. And I should mention that this is running on ceramic bearings, ceramic ball bearings, and also has a ceramic ball detent. So there it's, it's going to run smooth. And of course you can do the, you can of course open it with the nail nick like that. And I mean, uh, some people can use their index finger. I'm still working on that, but that's one way to do it with your index finger. Um, there's many ways to open this knife. Those are just the three ways that I typically do it. Um, when disengaging the lock, there's no lock stick at all. There's no lock stick. It's very smooth. Um, even if there was, I personally don't mind that much. I mean, this is not really a fidget knife in my opinion, something you don't really play with that often. It's, it's more of, I mean, it, it, it serves a purpose while still looking beautiful. Uh, one thing, uh, not really a complaint, just one thing to make note of, is the the way Enrique Pena disassembles, or sorry, uh, maintains his knives is new to me personally. Uh, I've seen an Instagram post that Guild sent me, um, and it's about how he uses a uh, some a hose like with water, and then you know sprays it out and puts soap in there and whatever to, to clean it out, and then you know air air uh, what's gosh pressurized air cans, you know what I'm talking about. He sprays that all out and then that's it's good to go after putting some lubricant on there. Personally, I like to uh, fully disassemble my knives and uh, get in there and meticulously clean every bearing and every washer and you know every part of the, the track for the ball detent and so on. But unfortunately, the um, the warranty will would be voided if I were to do that with these Pena knives. So I'll, I'm gonna have to stick with uh, either using soap and water and then blowing it out and spraying in some lubricant something like that. I know it's a very common thing with knife manufacturers these days to have those kinds of policies, but it would specifically with this knife, since it's running on bearings and you know how bearings attract dirt, uh, not necessarily attract dirt, but once they get clogged up with dirt, I mean, there, there's a noticeable performance difference compared to washers, which can typically stand up to a little bit more, but uh, it would it would have been nice to be able to disassemble that knife. I think that's an important thing in particular when you're trying to use a knife for any task no matter how expensive it is, you don't want to have to think twice about, um, oh, am I going to have to clean this? Or will I be able to clean this? What if I, you know, get gunk in here? You don't want to have to be thinking about all those things when you're actually cutting something. It's the, that shouldn't come to mind that you should just be focused on using the knife. So unfortunately, with, with some knives and some kind of uh, warranties, you, you do have to be a little bit more careful um, with how you handle them and of, of course making sure you don't get any dirt and whatnot in places you can't really reach um, but uh, that, that's just one thing you're gonna have to live with and personally it's not too big of a deal I mean if you treat your knives properly and you know if you have the right knife for the job it shouldn't be a problem at all uh, just for a quick size comparison real quick so here we have the trapper and then I'll put it up right next to my uh, good old Delica right here so 
course, you can see that the Trapper runs um, a lot smaller than the Delica, but not by a lot. If we compare the cutting edge, we're at 2.75 inches uh, for the Trapper, which is pretty comparable to that of the Delica. Um, take the 940, for example. Oh, no. Oh, thank God that didn't do anything. Uh, if we take the 940, for example, um, shoot, that scared me. <laughs> you can see that there's quite a substantial size, size difference here. Actually, though, the weight of this knife is very comparable to the 940. It comes in at right about uh, 240, or sorry, 2.3 uh, ounces, which is pretty comparable to the Benchmade uh, 940. However, since it's in such a smaller you know, form factor, uh, it's slightly more noticeable because obviously it's more dense. You have more material for such a you know, smaller form factor, but I prefer that. You know, it's not incredibly heavy, um, and I like to have more weight to a knife that's this size. I'd rather it weigh a little bit more than, you know, be really kind of light, if that makes any sense. That's my personal preference, and I like that. Makes it feel like you're holding something premium, which you definitely are. Now, in terms of uh, the overall uh, kind of aesthetic of the knife, like this, I think it really bridges that gap between what would typically be considered a more useful um more useful like utility type of blade. It's definitely not like a, doesn't look like a utility knife. That's not what I'm trying to say, but it adds utility while still looking like a gentleman's folder, but kind of breaks that kind of norm. It doesn't look like your standard, you know, carbon fiber, really cool looking gentleman's folder. Instead, it mixes in those elements of traditional uh, knife uh, design. And while still keeping that modern functionality, it looks, it does really, it performs really well while doing that. That's what I'm trying to say here. Uh, another really cool thing is how simple the inside of this knife looks. And of course, you can see this in many frame locks and, you know, it, it, you'll see it in a lot of frame locks. But what's interesting is like, say you take it against another kind of comparable, kind of comparable liner lock design on the inside of a smock right here. You can see that liner lock. It's just so much easier to get inside the Pena Trapper and clean out any kind of dust or, you know, lint or whatever from in between the scales as opposed to this right here. That's just one minor detail, and of course that applies to a lot of knives, but I just like the simplicity that comes with a knife like this. Um, now in terms of the ergonomics that I was talking about earlier, the clip, as I was saying, has that kind of sharper arrow towards the end, and you, you think, you'd think it would create a hot spot in your hand, but since everything has been chamfered and knocked down perfectly, when you put this in your hand, you don't feel it at all. This thing disappears in your palm. You don't feel, there's no contact I mean, there is contact, but there is no like hot spot feeling for some reason. No matter where I put it in my palm, it doesn't feel like this is digging in. I can't say the same for, say, for example, like my my clip on the smock. I mean, you can see clearly here, you know, when I'm holding the knife, where these hot spots occur. I mean, one of them is right here, another's at this corner, another's at this corner. And, you know, you, you feel that in the knife, and it doesn't feel as ergonomically pleasing but that's definitely not the case here. It feels very smooth and it just kind of blends into your hand really well. And I have slightly above ha average hands, but for a knife this small, it still kind of fits perfectly. And, you know, my pinky's not going over the edge and I'm not choking up too much on the blade. So I think that's really nice for it to have such a small, you know, form factor while still being able to hit, still being able to fit in the hand that well. That's really cool. Let me just get you guys some more views. Look at that Segaya pattern. So it is the harder uh, design to find. Um, if you're trying to look for the micarta ones, those pop up more frequently, but the Segaya pattern, and I think the Jig Titanium is a little bit hard to find these days as well, but if you do find them, I would <laughs> I'd probably just get them because you're probably not gonna see one again for a while. Uh, I, I looked for quite a while, um, and I couldn't find one. <laughs> so they are quite difficult to, to find on eBay and places like that. One more reason to join that Discord or really any other knife community with the experienced members so they can point you in the right direction. Another complaint that I heard was if you do decide to disassemble it, which I, I personally don't plan on doing, but some of these knives do run shallow. Um, so you have to be careful when disassembling them and just making sure that you're using you know good quality bits when you're unscrewing these things. But of course that applies to really any, um, any kind of high quality knife that you're trying to disassemble. Just be careful with those bits and uh, maybe use like a Weehaw or something like that. And I can put a link in the description for the right tooling for that, but I'm sure you all know that already. Now, if we compare that to more like a more traditional slip joint knife that I know I got from uh, 
some random shop in Smoky Mountain. Not the Smoky Mountain Knife Works, just some random shop. Uh, look at that, failed front flip. Not the knife's fault. Um, one thing to consider is like when I'm flipping this, the uh, back part of that kind of hits my uh, knuckle right here. It's just my nature of choking up on the blade during deployment. But if I bring it back, you know, I just have to work on deploying that. But see, it, it, it works perfectly every time. That was just my fault. If we compare it against uh, like a traditional kind of slip joint <clears throat> trapper, this is a trapper, um, you'll, you'll notice that, you know, the, the size and the shape are very comparable. Of course, the blade height is a lot better here on this knife. More uh, more slicing capabilities than this guy right here. But you can definitely see where what direction uh, Enrique Peña was headed with this knife. And it looks great. So overall, this is a really good knife that, you know, looks great while still having EDC functionality. Um, the weight, in terms of weight restriction and, you know, things like, you know, the size of your blade and maintenance and things like that, it may not be the greatest knife in that regard, but it certainly is unique and will stand out and looks really damn good while doing it. Um, this is more than enough for my EDC needs. I certainly don't need a larger blade or any kind of special weight restriction or things like that. It's just, it, it just looks good and it, it, it does the job. And it feels like you're holding a piece of art, which in my opinion is a good percentage of why I carry, you know, a knife uh, to like in my backyard or wherever I'm going. It's just nice to have and it looks good. So that's a, a huge reason for me uh, for carrying them. And of course, I mean, the fit and finish on this by Riot Knives and designed by Enrique Pena is, is perfect. It's, you know, for a production knife, you're getting pretty much like custom knife quality at a production knife level. And of course, that's maybe slightly uh, a bit of an overstatement in terms of the design, but if you're talking about the functionality of the knife and how it operates and how it feels in your hand ergonomically, you're not, I mean, the, 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 the trade-off isn't that noticeable. Um, and I say that after having handled uh, um, a custom Pena knife. It's a really beautiful knife. So if you like this video, please feel free to um, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down with any feedback. That would be greatly appreciated. Feel free to leave a comment below. I really would like to know what you all use these types of knives for, like what you uh, designate them for in your EDC rotation, or what kind of Pena you own or if you're looking for one. If you need one, I could try and point you in the right direction. Uh, that being said, please feel free to subscribe as well, and it'll put me in a It'll, it'll definitely show me uh, what kind of uh, engagement we're talking about here on these YouTube videos and what direction I should go in the future. But overall, thank you so much. Um, hope you all have a nice day. Bala out.